All vehicles meeting the 2013 EPA engine emission requirements are required to have onboard diagnostics to monitor the performance and functionality of emission-related devices, both on the engine and in the after-treatment components. This OBD system also protects against emissions tampering and allows emissions testing without exhaust gas analysis. The brains of the OBD system lie within the engine control unit, which uses monitors to detect misfires, open circuits, and system and emissions performance. If a monitor detects abnormal system operation, the malfunction indicator light will appear. This light represents OBD faults only and indicates that an emission service is necessary. The OBD lamp does not directly cause engine derates, but it can appear in conjunction with the check engine light and or the engine stop lamp. The check engine light can also appear by itself or in conjunction with the engine stop lamp. It indicates that an engine system problem has occurred and you should seek service as soon as possible. In many cases, such as with diesel particulate filter regeneration, an ignored check engine light can eventually progress into a stop engine lamp. The stop engine lamp indicates that a serious engine system problem exists and should be considered an emergency. In this case, you should stop the vehicle as safely as possible and turn off the engine. All MX-13 engines are equipped with an exhaust after-treatment system that includes a diesel particulate filter and a selective catalytic reducer. Soot generated by the engine is removed from the exhaust stream by the diesel particulate filter. To continue operating at peak performance, the after-treatment system cleans or regenerates the diesel particulate filter to maintain optimal exhaust flow. Regeneration occurs automatically at higher exhaust temperature, so nothing is required by the drivers. As a precaution to pedestrians and service personnel, regeneration will pause at speeds below 5 miles an hour, and a high exhaust system temperature lamp will illuminate, indicating that the system is still very hot. Regeneration will resume when the vehicle has reached speeds above 5 miles an hour. This is designed as a safety device and the light will reset itself automatically when temperatures decrease or speed increases. Both the passive and active regenerations primarily occur in the background without your involvement. However, there are situations when you will need to interact with the system. If you're operating near flammable vapors, dry grass, or other unsuitable conditions, the elevated exhaust temperatures produced by regeneration should be avoided by using the stop position on the regeneration switch. All vehicles come equipped with a three-position regeneration switch mounted on the dash. Three-position switches can be used to postpone a regeneration until conditions allow. Select the stop position when necessary by pushing the switch into the up position. Once the vehicle leaves the unsuitable conditions, return the switch to the center position, allowing the vehicle to perform the necessary regeneration. It's important to return the switch to the center position as soon as conditions permit. Failure to do so will result in particulate buildup in the filter, a forced stationary regeneration, and potential damage to the filter. Allowing this system to continually clean the filter will result in improved vehicle efficiency and uptime. However, light duty drive cycles and low exhaust temperatures can prevent the system from regenerating on its own. If that happens, you will see progressive indications telling you what actions to take to protect the after-treatment system. The DPF warning notifications escalate through four warning levels before entering a final limp mode. It's important to know and understand these notifications and warnings and how to avoid them. It could mean the difference between a simple change in driving style or a trip to the dealer. At level 1, a continuously lit lamp in the gauge cluster will appear. At the second level, the lamp flashes once a second, reminding you that regeneration is needed. Driving conditions remain unsuitable for sufficient active and passive regeneration, and soot levels are continuing to rise. At the third level, the gauge warning lamp will flash once a second, and the check engine light will appear, indicating that the particulate filter is now full. This stage also initiates an engine derate, which can only be removed by pulling off the road and conducting a stationary regeneration. When the fourth level is reached, the stop engine lamp illuminates, 
indicating the soot level in the DPF is at full capacity. At this level, active and passive regeneration will not occur, and the vehicle will be limited to 5 miles per hour. You must stop the vehicle as soon and safely as possible and turn off the ignition. The truck will then need to be serviced to correct the problem. The DPF warning lamps, your response, and other critical information is described in detail in your after-treatment manual. Because issues of personal safety and potential damage to the vehicle are involved, it's important to read and understand these warnings, what they mean, and the actions you are required to take. At levels 1 through 3, a stationary regeneration will always return your vehicle to normal operating conditions. This regeneration will take 30 to 45 minutes and use up to one half gallon of diesel, depending on the level of soot in the filter. However, there are steps you can take to avoid it, and the following driving style changes can help. Increasing vehicle speed and engine load can promote a passive or active regeneration. For example, Alter your driving style or route to include constant vehicle speeds over 35 miles per hour for as long as possible, or until the warning lamp goes out, or temporarily operate at higher engine speeds until the lamp goes out. The MX-13 is able to regenerate under the lightest engine loads when operating at speeds between 1400 and 1750 RPM. If you're unable to make these changes to clean the particulate filter, a stationary regeneration will be required. The vehicle should always be parked outside in a safe location where there are no combustible vapors and at least five feet between the vehicle and any combustible materials. Next, verify that the following conditions are met. That the parking brake is set, the engine is at low idle, that neither the throttle brake nor clutch is applied, that the PTO is disengaged and the transmission is in neutral, and the cruise control and engine brake are both off. Then get out and check once again to make sure no people are near the vehicle and that combustible materials are at least five feet away. Return to the cab and push the regeneration switch for at least four to eight seconds to initiate action. It may take 30 seconds or more to start as the system conducts various self-checks You'll hear the engine revs increase when the regeneration starts. Accidental throttle, brake, or clutch movements will not stop a parked regeneration. You can stop an automatic or parked regeneration if your vehicle is equipped with a three-position switch. Because an automatic regeneration can occur at any time, the switch should be off any time the vehicle is parked in a potentially unsafe area or in a building, but not while you're driving. Again, we urge you to read and follow the instructions found in the After Treatment Systems Manual. To further reduce emissions, MX-13 engine after treatment uses selective catalytic reduction, which injects diesel exhaust fluid or DEF into the exhaust gases upstream from the catalyst. DEF consumption typically runs about 3% of diesel consumption. DEF is a mixture of one-third urea and two-thirds distilled water, and is contained in its own tank mounted on the frame rail behind the cab or sleeper. The fluid is safe and non-toxic, but is mildly corrosive, so care should be taken when filling the tank. It should be washed off the vehicle, skin, and clothing if contact is made. During very cold weather, death will turn to slush around 11 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 12 degrees Celsius. Because the SCR system purges DEF to prevent damage from freezing, you should wait two minutes to disconnect the batteries after engine shutdown. Also, do not add chemicals or additives to the DEF in an effort to prevent freezing. Any tank contamination requires immediate attention and may require cleaning by an authorized service repair facility. The dash-mounted DEF gauge monitors the fluid level and will warn you when it gets low. There are four warning stages. If the tank is not refilled when necessary, eventually the engine will derate and vehicle speed will be limited. At stage one, the DEF gauge warning light illuminates. This occurs when the DEF gauge reads approximately 12% full. Actual percentages will vary slightly depending on the DEF tank your vehicle is equipped with. In addition, a solid illuminated DEF symbol will appear on the dash along with a diesel exhaust fluid low message in the driver information and performance centers. 
At stage two, approximately 8% DEF tank capacity, the DEF symbol on the dash will begin to flash once per second. This is the final warning stage before a progressive power D rate will occur. The tank is close to empty at the beginning of stage three, and the engine will begin to gradually derate to 60% of peak torque. At the same time, the check engine lamp illuminates, and the driver performance center displays a message signifying that a derate has been applied. At stage four, if DEF is not replenished, the derate message in the gauge cluster will change from amber to red. Continued driving will result in active fault codes and a speed restriction of five miles per hour. These notifications, derates, and faults can be resolved or avoided easily and immediately by refilling the DEF tank to approximately 25% capacity or above. It's important to understand the warning levels descriptions in the after-treatment operator's manual. The manual also contains DEF recommendations and specifications, all of which are important to follow for optimum engine performance. It is imperative that only diesel exhaust fluid that meets the standards of the American Petroleum Institute is used. PACAR recommends using TRP Clean Blue diesel exhaust fluid, which is available at all authorized PACAR engine service locations. It only takes a few minutes to fill the DEF tank. You can purchase one-gallon containers of DEF fluid to keep in a secure location for emergencies. However, if you do run low and there's no fluid readily available, you can always call PACAR Customer Care to find the nearest resource.